has been quite a day in Berkeley, California, just a short time ago as we welcome you to the BYU TV Sports Post Game Show. Christian Stewart to Jordan Leslie, 38 yards. BYU goes up by seven. Last seconds of the game, pass to the end zone, incomplete, and the Cougars and a happy Bronco Mendenhall knock off California 42 to 35. We hope you enjoyed it at your house. Our live audience here at BYU TV had a great afternoon. Victory does taste sweet. Hi, everybody. Dave McCann, David Nixon, Brian Logan, Blaine Fowler. We have highlights. We have Bronco Mendenhall momentarily. But, uh, whoa, we was just trying to take a deep <laughs> breath. And what a fourth quarter, Blaine. Yeah, I had a, after we watched, I had to bend down and hold my knees. I was out of breath. <laughs> the defense came up with enough big plays down the stretch to make a difference. And we talked about bend but don't break. Cal ran 101 plays in this ballgame. 101 plays. When you run 101 plays and you have 566 yards of offense, you'd expect them to score in the 50s. But because BYU kept things in front, they didn't give up big plays. They, they kept themselves in the ball game and gave themselves a chance to win. And then BYU had enough big plays on offense, capped off by that 38-yard touchdown we just saw to Jordan Leslie. They won the game on big plays. Cal bent and they broke. BYU bent but didn't break. David, just uh, before the game, we thought if the defense that showed up just a little bit might tip the balance in the game, and BYU's defense did a little more than Cal. They did. BYU, I mean, I, I was surprised how much pressure BYU was putting on Goff the entire uh, you know, evening. Uh, they really got to Goff and disrupted him. But like Blaine said, you know, Goff really went short passing routes, right? He didn't go deep very often, so BYU kept everything in front of him. And when they need the stops, they got him, especially on that last drive. But, uh, I, you know, we, we said BYU's defense just need to do enough because we figured BYU's offense would do what they did uh, and put up some, uh, some serious points. So uh, kudos to, to BYU's defense for, for giving up points, but, but uh, getting the win. And, Brian, those DBs took four shots on that last possession, all in the end zone and no completions. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's really what happens last, right? And they didn't <laughs> score. So uh, <laughs> that's, the most, that's the most important thing. Uh, we, we knew that this receiving core was just outstanding. Uh, a lot of those guys are going to play in the NFL. So... You know, the DBs, they did what they could. And, and as long as it wasn't, you know, 50, 60 points that they gave up, um, we knew that they were going to be fine. So, but at the end of the day, like I said, those last four in, the, in, in a row, mm -hmm. they were able to stop them, keep them out the end zone for that victory. We have a whole lot of reaction coming out of Berkeley. Let's start with the happy head coach, Bronco Mendenhall, with Spencer Linton moments ago. Coach, you said at one point you wanted a double fist pump this week. Does that win deliver the double fist pump for you? It's everything that I got. I'm so happy for our team and our coaches and those that have really supported us from the beginning through the middle to the end. To start off with four wins, then lose four in a row, and now win four, including a win against California in the Pac-12. What does that mean to BYU football moving forward? We have a really good team. We've had a really good program for 10 years. Um, and we, uh, we're resilient, and that is uh, one of the best compliments I can pay to a team and a program. What are your emotions right now? Just, uh, I'm absolutely um, thrilled for my team, for uh, this group of guys, the way they've hung together and battled together and, hung and, um, and stayed optimistic and positive and hardworking. California averaged 39 points a game. You held them to 35. BYU scores 42. Were you okay with the shootout as long as it ended this way? Bottom line is to, to give your guys the best chance they can to play well um, and to have a chance to win. And we knew the game could be like this, planned for it to be like this, and so happy that it turned out in our favor. I saw you uh, embracing with uh, Rob Daniel and DeAndre West, a couple of guys that are Bay Area natives. What was the message and the feeling like that were there? It's just that I love them. Um, any of the players that choose to come and trust me enough to come to BYU with all the unique challenges and strengths that it has, it takes a very unique and special young person, and I'm surrounded by him. Coach, can we get another fist pump? <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Bronco Mendenhall promising on BYU Sports Nation that he would do the fist pump. And, then, uh, and he did a double. He did, double. did a double. He's in a, he's in a good mood. That's a good win on the road. Yeah, it is. And, and – all the things that we've seen the last three weeks, they've had a little asterisk by them because it's BYU was physically superior to the teams they've played the last three weeks. Uh, they were good enough to just line up and run over the top of those teams. We thought we saw improvement, um, and this gives you know gives you a, 
the positive reinforcement you needed that, you know what, all the things that they've been doing, and they, they weren't perfect, Brian, they weren't no. perfect. No. There were things that they were doing right. in the first, second, third quarter on the defense that were driving us crazy, yeah. uh, but but they were good enough to win, and we, we definitely saw – Improvement and and it definitely showed us that over the last three weeks it all just wasn't it just wasn't inferior opposition. We figured Christian Stewart would have a big day. It was his big chance to shine. He had some boneheaded plays where he looked like the backup, and he had a whole lot more plays where he ends up the star of the game. And here's the quarterback with Spencer. Christian, a new career high for you in yards and touchdown passes. You win the game, 42-35. Did it play out like this in your mind? No, it definitely didn't play out like this in my mind. Um, I just, I felt like I had a couple mistakes. I was kind of struggling, really rattled actually at halftime. And I'm just really happy that my teammates, they played their butts off and the defense played so great. And I'm just glad we did enough to win. I mean, we, I said to Fui, uh, I was like, hey, we've been in too many of these to lose this one. We know what it feels like being on that end and we weren't gonna let that happen tonight. Fourth straight win now for BYU. There was a moment down there when you had the lateral pass and it backfired in a big way. It was kind of an opportunity for your team to kind of slowly fade away, but you came back and you scored on the next drive. What was the mindset going into that next drive after a huge mistake? My mindset the whole week has been, you know what? This is my last regular season game I'm ever gonna play. I have to put everything out there. I gotta give it everything. And yeah, we made a, a stupid mistake. That was my fault. But I, I knew that I had to make it up for my teammates. We have been playing too well, been uh, on a roll, and I wasn't gonna let them down this game. Walk me through your emotions and the emotions of the sideline when you were watching that final Cal drive. I was just praying, I'll be honest. I was praying, please, please, we need to stop. And then on that fourth and goal, I said to one of the trainers, I can't watch this, I can't watch. I was, I was dying, but our defense came up huge and I've never been happier. Did you see something in the uh, at halftime or talk about something at halftime that you knew you'd have Jordan Leslie deep on not one but two plays? No, those were just, honestly, I got out there, I saw press man, I signaled him a fade route and just threw that one up. And then the crazy thing is that last touchdown, we ran that play, it's a new play this week and I've never thrown it to Jordan one time. Never even looked at him, he's not even in the read, and I just saw him running free down the middle and laid it out there and he ran under it. Is this the bomb squad that you've been waiting for all year? That's the bomb squad right there. That must have been some meal. I heard you had Jordan Leslie over for Thanksgiving dinner. What'd you guys eat? Holy smokes. He just came over so I would throw it to him. He's lucky. No, uh, Thanksgiving dinner, you know, and he got really close with my family. They all love him and I'm really happy for him. This is his last, Last game, he's a senior, and I'm happy for him. Congratulations, Kristen. Thank you. Christian Stewart from Berkeley moments ago. All right, let's show you what happened. Paula CK, Blaine, into the end zone. BYU's up 7-0 on their first drive. Back comes California. And we knew it was going to be like this. In fact, we thought this would be the way it would be all game long. BYU scores, Cal scores. Like, who was going to blink first? And, you know, BYU did enough in the run game to keep Cal uh, honest defensively, and that set some things up for later in the game. The fade pass to Jordan Leslie was a result of a good run fake. This is Mitch Jurgens from 47 yards out. BYU takes a 14 to 7 lead. Second quarter, David, back come the Bears. Yeah, really, like Blaine said, it was kind of tit for tat. BYU would score, Cal would score, BYU would punt, Cal would punt. Uh, so they kind of traded back and forth, but then, you know, in the, going into the third quarter, they finally separated themselves. Interception here, Christian Stewart's third interception in his seven starts. Contrast that with his 22 touchdown passes. That's amazing. Lawler into the end zone. He had a big first half, 21-14 Bears. On to the third quarter, Brian Taron Houck with a big 13-yarder. Yeah, he just had the, the whereabout and the presence to know, hey, let me stop, let me give my quarterback an opportunity to throw me the ball and move the chains, and he did just that. And then Brian out of the backfield, a one-hander from Algie Brown, then he shows his power. Algie Brown right here just running over fool. Boom, 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 I'm getting in the end zone. <laughs> Sky Pove, David, coming up big. Yeah, great play by Sky. You see Kai Nakua, the other safety coming across, so I think that would have been a pick no matter what, but Sky undercuts the route, picks it off. But hey, man, you can't get tackled. Take it off. Come, come on, on man. Man. <laughs> Blaine, what happens here? I don't need, oh gosh, I don't even want to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, let's fast yeah, so, forward this. So, so, so Christian made a bad decision, and then Paul was like, acted like, oh, that's okay. You guys can have it. Thank goodness for Taron Houck and his effort to go make the tackle. Back come the Bears. A few moments later, they go up 28-21 on Trey Watson's touchdown run. Here come the Cougars. 
and it's Christian Stewart and Paul Asike rumbling 28 yards. Yeah, that's one of those things where when you see the blitzing safety and the blitzing linebacker, you've got to throw it to your, your receiver, which was the running back in that instance. You, wherever the, the defenders vacate, you've got to throw it there. Jurgens ties the game up at 28. On to the fourth. California decides not to go for it on fourth and eight, and they pin BYU to the one yard line, Blaine, but this would start a nice little drive. Still tied up at 28. Leslie from 83 yards out. Well, and I love, Christian Stewart said that he saw a man press on the outside. He audibled this play at the line of scrimmage. This is Christian Stewart's offense now, huh? Back come the Bears, and it's Trevor Davis. What a phenomenal catch. We're tied up at 35, and then this one puts BYU up for good at 42-35. Leslie wide open from 38 yards. And now to the end of the game, fourth and goal, throw to the end zone, and Davis is over there. The ball falls incomplete. You got a happy coach and an eighth win on the season and a 42-35 victory for BYU. They now go to three and one against the Cal Bears and you see Bronco on the move and Blaine, the numbers don't lie. It was a shootout. Yeah, 540 yards for the Cougs and, and 566 for the Bears. That's about what we expected, right guys? Yeah. Although we thought the points would be a little bit higher and then look at BYU, 433 yards passing. They outpassed the Golden Bears, the number five passing team in the country and Christian Stewart was phenomenal with his five touchdowns 433 yards and you mentioned it a minute ago Dave we need to emphasize this again as, a, as since Christian Stewart has taken over this offense 22 touchdown passes and just three interceptions that is phenomenal all right the Y factor nominees uh, it's it's not going to take much here Mitch Matthews caught a pass and hurt his shoulder Robertson Daniel struggled for most of the game. Nate Carter didn't play. Hey, thanks for that, Nate. <laughs> Way to go, Nate. Devin Mahina uh, didn't do much either, but Leslie came up big, and you can still vote uh, as we roll through this segment, and we'll name the winner in just a little bit. BYU Sports Nation, a reminder, you can listen and watch Monday through Friday at high noon Eastern time on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Jordan Leslie, 83 yards, the longest touchdown of the year for BYU, and we are going to hear from Jordan in just a moment. 42-35, the Cougars are winners. Postgame continues on BYU TV. The BYU TV Sports Post Game is brought to you in part by BYU alumni. Chances are the relationships that change your life happen at BYU. BYU alumni, connected for good. 
42-35. The Cougars beat the Cow Bears. What a day for Mitch Jurgens as well. Seven catches, 107 yards, and two touchdowns. This is one of them in the Cougars' seven-point victory. As we welcome you back into our BYU TV studios here in Provo, Utah, David Nixon, Brian Logan, Blaine Fowler, Spencer Linton been busy doing post-game interviews. A moment ago, he caught up with Jordan Leslie. Jordan, huge second half for you. What does this team mean to this, or this win mean to this team in that locker room? You know, first I want to, you know, thank our fans. You know, every away game we have tons of fans that, you know, in the stadium, and it's just crazy to have us, and uh, it just helps out a lot. And you know, this this win's important to us. Uh, it shows how much heart we have to go four and zero. You know, thinking undefeated season and lose four straight. You know, it says a lot about this team. You know, our way to, way to hold our composure and win four straight, and hopefully the fifth one. Two long touchdown catches, including your career long 83 yards. Uh, what was the, what was the signal that, that Christian gave to you on the on the first touchdown? On the first one, uh, you know, I told him before I was like, "Hey, I can beat him. I can beat him deep." And he knows, you know, I have pretty good speed. So right when he saw him press me, I, I knew he was going to me, and I was just able to get by him. And I mean, there was no one catching me. Could you have envisioned a better last regular season game in your career? Oh, not at all. You know, it's you know, it's a little heartbreaking to you know, this is my final regular season game. And it, you know, just I had to go up and hug my mom and my grandfather because you know. I've, I fought so hard, and you know this team's fought hard, and it's great to, you know, have a win like this. It showed our defense can make stops, showed our offense can score points, and that's great for us. Walk us through your emotions inside right now, specifically. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm not, I'm not a crying type, but you know, if I was, I'd be crying right now because this is a great win for us. Uh, just to see, you know, the passion in the locker room, to see the love we have for this team, it's, it's crazy, and you know, no one can break us, yeah, no matter what happens. Christian told me that you came over thanks for Thanksgiving just so that you would throw him the ball. How much did that factor into today? I might have, you know, handed him his plate and been like, hey, man, on this play I'm open, just, just throw it up and see what happens. But, uh, no, I mean, me and Christian have been really good friends, and uh, it's, it's just great to end both of our senior careers like this. What was the, what was the message from your uh, your coaches in the locker room just now? You know, the, Coach Menhall is ex excited, you know. He says one of his best wins in his 10 years, and that says a lot. And uh, to be such a, you know, prestigious coach and stuff like that, it means a lot. And just to see his passion for us and, you know, how excited he was for us, uh, probably some video somewhere of you know the celebration we just had it was it was great and it was fun and I, I love this team contrast the feeling after four straight losses and now four straight <clears throat> wins to end the regular season you know I, I mean of course it feels great uh, you know losses losses hurt but to have a win like this especially you know four straight just means a lot to us and uh, you know but it doesn't change it we're still hungry we want to get this bowl game we want to show you know everyone you know we can we can hang with anybody Jordan good luck in Miami we'll see you there thank you see you there Jordan Leslie, uh, phenomenal performance. Uh, if, if uh, I mean, here's a guy one year in the program, and he sounds like a lifelong BYU Cougar. It, it was a, a gamble for him to transfer from UTEP after he graduated to come here and, and get one shot. But Blaine, he has lived up to the billing. And, and those of us who have been fortunate to get to know him, uh, any, anyone would want to have him over for Thanksgiving dinner. Absolutely. He, he fits in so well. He's exactly... Um, what BYU likes to have in a player. You know, when he, he graduated with his engineering degree. So he, he's a smart young man that had his academics in order. And he comes in, and he came because he wanted to be in a bigger program that had got more exposure and was going to play on a bigger stage. He'd never been to a bowl game at UTEP. And, and so this was an opportunity for him to step up. Right from the beginning of the season, when we watched him on tape at UTEP, this was a big-time player. Yeah. We knew that he was going to have an impact. In fact, of all the new players coming in, we thought that he would have the biggest impact, and certainly he has. Um, he's lived up to everything. But what I like about him is the attitude he came with. He's like, okay, this is not a culture that I'm used to, right. so it's going to be completely new to me. But I've heard all about it. I embrace it. I'm going to live it, I'm gonna, and I'm going to learn from it. And uh, he's really enjoyed himself here, and we've watched him enjoy himself. He's a perfect fit for BYU. And, David, he had that early high ankle sprain. I don't even know if we saw Jordan Leslie healthy all season, even, even today. Yeah, it's true. Those high ankle sprains I have on my senior year, and they, and they are so tough to recover from, and it's something that hampers you the rest of the season. Right. And, and, and he, it's been noted that he ha still hasn't been able to really cut on it well. He still has good vertical speed, uh, but as far as taking quick slants, things like that kind of hurts his ankle. Uh, but we saw today when he gets open, he's got enough speed and enough in that ankle to get him past the goal line. So uh, obviously major, major game from him, great contribution. And Brian, when, when, uh, when he came into this BYU culture, and it's different because you experienced it as well, mm -hmm. you have to decide, I'm embracing this and it's going to be a part of me, or you end up fighting it all the time, you get in trouble, you miss time, you do this and this and this. Leslie, and you're a good example of that too, of guys who said, hey, this is a little different, 
But this is what it is, and, and Leslie's done that. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing is, is choice, right? And Coach Mendenhall is all about choice. And when he sees guys, it doesn't matter if you're LDS or not LDS, if you go and make that choice and say, I'm going to embrace this program, um, you know, I, I want all of it that it has to offer me. Um, you know, he loves that. The coaching staff loves that. But it really does pay off, you know, on and off the field. Uh, and so it's exciting to see, you know, other guys that are black, not LDS, that can come in and embrace the culture um, and, and still succeed. Um, I, I, think, I think it's still a little bit easier when you only have one year or two years, you know, sure. coming from a junior sure. college. Um, but you, you, you still do see some, some of those younger guys. And, and what Jordan Leslie's going to do now is he's going to start that pipeline. You know, he can go back to, you know, his, his area in Texas or his family, friends, whatever the case is, uh, and, and try to recruit. Same thing with, with – with, uh, um, you know, the, the coaches, they can say, hey, look, Jordan Leslie is a perfect example of a kid that's, that's, that's black, not LDS, and he was successful here. So if he can do it, you can do it as well. Five catches, 155 yards, two touchdowns for Jordan Leslie. We are ready to reveal tonight's Y Factor, and, I'm, and I'm already gonna, we already know it's Jordan Leslie. <laughs> and look, no well, drama. the fans voted. If they didn't vote yeah. Jordan, it's crazy. Come on. <laughs> Leslie, Matthews, Daniel Carter, and Mahina were the nominees and let's bring Spencer in from Berkeley and uh, Spencer had the number one choice this week he went with the number one guy but let's make it official and roll it out all right it is Jordan Leslie in a, in a very dramatic decision I want to see the percentage <laughs> what's the percentage, yeah, what's the percentage? did he even not votes. get a vote yeah, everybody else gets wow zero. there yeah, you go right there you go wait wait how did I get six percent well, Nate Carter's mom voted for him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Nate Carter didn't yeah. see a single vote. I think my got mom 2%. got me even the 6%. Devin's mom got him. Your yeah. mom got him. Yeah, my you. mom got Your me. Your mom, right, and Rob's yeah. mom. Spencer, rather than give you the opportunity to gloat, uh, I'd like to ask you, you spent a lot of time with Jordan Leslie. You interviewed him a moment ago, but you've been talking to him all season. This is a special, a special guy. He really is. He had one year to come in and make an impact, and I think he's done that and much more. Just talking with some of the BYU staff, teammates, coaches, he's really been a gem, not only on the field, but off the field in his interactions with fans and teammates and just the leadership, the immediate leadership that he brought to the team. You can see what a difference it makes, and then, of course, it's kind of a fitting end for him to go out and perform the way that he did tonight. So Jordan Leslie, not only is he the Y factor for the game, really he might be the Y factor for the entire season. What was the feeling in the stadium, and there were a lot of BYU fans, when that errant play at the goal line went the other direction for Cal, and then Cal went down and scored, and, and, and the feeling was like, oh, not again, and then the Cougars marched back. It was a gut punch, and I immediately thought about when BYU was leading Central Florida, UCF 17 to 10 in the third quarter, and they had that Algie Brown fumble in the red zone, and I thought, Okay, well, let's see if they've learned anything about being resilient from that experience. And sure enough, next possession, they got the ball. And, and I asked Christian Stewart, you heard it just a minute ago, what was the mindset? And he said, this, it's been the same, you know, the entire season. Let's just go score. Let's go do our thing. And so I think they showed some huge maturity to come back the way that they did after really a terrible, terrible mishap deep on, uh, in the California zone. Was there not a feeling on that BYU sideline after Leslie's last touchdown that perhaps the Cougars had scored too soon? Oh, certainly. I mean, you look at the California offense and two plus minutes is an eternity for the Bears to move down the field. Uh, but you just kind of felt like BYU was going to make enough plays, and, and they did that. And the secondary was picked on by one of the most talented wide receiver cores in the entire country. But they made adjustments at halftime. This, the defense got better in the second half, and I thought they were absolutely resolute against a premier passing offense. I don't think BYU uh, will see this good a passing offense in quite some time. That's why Bronco called it a unique challenge. Solid work all day as usual. Spencer Linton live from Berkeley Memorial Stadium. Nice job. Have a safe trip home. Thanks, Dave. All right, there's Spencer winning the Y factor. and. And uh, doing a solid job. Team for us Team Des. Team Des. Team Des. Team Des. We're, we're on this guy. He's yeah. in the stadium. Yeah. He's the enemy. We're on, we're <laughs> yeah. on my team. Team Half Des. Team Des. We'll yeah, take we you down yeah. in the bowl game. Yeah. We'll meet you in Miami yeah. Beach. Yeah. We'll meet you. <laughs> See you there. Devon Blackman. Where has he been all season? Today he caught six passes for 60 yards. For a time he was Spencer Christian's go-to man. Let's hear from Devon right now. Devon, you picked a great time to uh, get heavily involved in the offense, your final game of the regular season. Uh, was there an added emphasis in practice this week to get you the ball? Um, not really. You know, we just did our same game plan, and, you know, I just stayed prepared. 
you know, as, as we do every day in practice, just prepare ourselves for when it's your time out there, you know, you can contribute to the team. This was a big weekend for you. Uh, I heard you, you spoke at the fireside last night, and you had six catches tonight. How do you feel inside right now? Um, I just feel blessed, you know. I, you know, I really took the time out to work on myself as a person outside the field. And, you know, I got to see my family. I had, like, 16 family members come up here. So, you know, and this week I just felt like we felt – we came together as a team and, you know, we was able to trust each other more. So I just went out there and just tried to contribute the best way I can as a team, as a teammate, so they can end up trusting me. Why didn't this team fold after what looked like a gut punch of a mistake on the one yard line down there? Um, because we got a lot of heart and we believe in each other, you know, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much all I could say. You know, I think that we came together and we showed everybody that we're a team. And, you know, after four losses, you know, losing Taysom, that hurt us, but I think we pulled together and we ended the season well. What kind of a quarterback is Christian Stewart in your mind? He's a great quarterback. I love Christian. You know, in fall camp, me and Christian was connecting all the time. So I had a relationship with him, you know, outside of before, you know, uh, Taysom got hurt. So, you know, Christian's a friend to me and he's like an older brother. What does your decision to come to BYU mean after uh, uh, an up and down season like this? Um, you know, uh, being a good person and being the man I want to be in 40 years is still the motive for me. So, you know, um, it doesn't affect my season. The, you know, playing football is just a privilege. And, you know, so I still I still came here to be a better person. And, um, you know, what can I say? Uh, yeah, just came here to be a better person. <laughs> well, you played a big part in the offense today. Big game coming up in Miami. How do you feel like this team needs to get better moving forward towards South Beach? Just keep our head down and focus. You know, we, we proved that we could come out here and play. We just got to keep, keep focused and preparing like we know we can and play BYU football. Congratulations, Devon. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Devon Blackman. Now, that's the second time we've interviewed Devon Blackman this season. It came earlier uh, after one of his ball games, and uh, that's a completely different young man. That is, that is absolutely day and night. I wish we could see side by side those interviews, but... Do you see how mature this kid is compared to that interview? And it was funny because I was talking to you guys. Wow, he's, he's, he's emerging. He's getting a lot of catches. And I was like, it must have been, it must have been this, the scriptures. And, and you guys started laughing. And I was like, no, if you look at his Twitter handle, he was tweeting all these different Bible verses. And he had his Bible open. And you could see the things highlighted. And I was like, huh, wow. You know? uh, and you, and you, look at, you look at just uh, you know, how he's approaching the interview, how he's approaching the game. And the biggest thing that I loved is, is that he said that, you know, I, I took some time to focus on myself and my goals and where I wanted to be, which is, you know, in 40 years, I want to be a better person. And this is what the BYU football program is all about right here. David, when Devon, <laughs> Devon was suspended for the first game for breaking team rules during the summer. And, and there were many who wondered aloud, can he even survive here? Um, and, uh, and, and he regrouped, didn't get much playing time. We didn't see him get many targets until today. But, uh, but again, that, boy, has he emerged as, as a guy who, who has come through. Uh, you know, that, that four-game losing streak uh, changed a lot of people. Maybe it changed him the most. No, no doubt. I mean, give him a lot of credit. You're right. He, he was suspended at the beginning of the season. Um, he didn't see a lot of playing time. They even yanked him from his punt return duties, which he was kind of the guy, uh, to all of a sudden come in this game and have six catches. And a lot of those were on crucial third downs. that yeah. you needed a first down, and, and Christian found him. Um, I mean, there was a point in the first half where Jordan Leslie and Mitch Matthews only had three catches combined. Uh, but instead, other guys stepped up like Devon and Mitch Jurgen. So uh, props to Devon and going out there and, and doing his thing. And, and like, like Brian said, you can see that he's definitely matured throughout this season. And uh, it's exciting that we have one more year with him. It's high time we hear from uh, one of the defensive backs, isn't it, Brian? Um, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a short time ago, Spencer, with Michael Davis, who was in on that final play that ended the game. Michael, you made some critical plays there late in the game. BYU wins 42-35. How are you feeling right now? Pretty pumped, you know, pretty pumped, pretty juice, pretty juice. But my boy Jordan Leslie did some work too, you know? But we all did work, you know what I mean? We all had work. What kind of a challenge was it to defend those California wide receivers and their quarterback, Jared Goff? It was a big challenge because it was different from what, we, from what we always faced. And it was a big step. And we're glad that we came up to the challenge. It seemed like the pass defense kind of batting down the hatch. It's got a little bit better in the second half. Were there any adjustments you made at halftime? Um, not really. We just played a lot harder. You know, just a mindset. We just played a lot harder and we came back. What was the sideline and the celebration like with uh, your teammates on the field and on the sideline? It was crazy. It was pretty crazy, you know. Our teammates are good. Our fans are good. Just glad to. That's amazing people.
Four game win streak going into the bowl game. What does this team have to do to make it nine wins on the season? Just practice hard, work hard, and just have teamwork. Enjoy this one tonight. Oh, thank you. Davis said the defense holding Cal below their season average in the win today in Berkeley. Coming up, BYU in Eastern Kentucky. That's at 9.30 Eastern time here on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Blaine and I will be on the call just across the street from where we are now. Cougars number one in the country in scoring at 96.7 points per game. How many will they score tonight? We'll see live on BYU TV. Algie Brown, a one-handed catch and a rumble to the end zone on a big Saturday for the Cougars on BYU TV. We're back with more in a moment. Forty-two, thirty-five. BYU. Here's the game-winning pass. All tied up at thirty-five. Jordan Leslie's second touchdown of the game, and the Cougars win it. Forty-two, thirty-five. Our live post-game show continuing here on BYU TV as we get closer to Cougar basketball coming up again, nine thirty Eastern time. All right, let's get into some film session here. We saw a lot of deep balls today. Christian Stewart alluding to the bomb squad of sorts. What works on this play, Brian, for Mitch Jurgens? Yeah, just the, the misdirection. And, and Cal all day did a great job at defending this play. This is one of BYU's bread and butter where they're going to do a simple read option. And, and if everything goes well, uh, there's a couple of different places that, that Christian Stewart can throw the ball to. And all day they were in man coverage. Uh, but this, this particular play, for some reason, the, the safety drops down. It's not in zone. Everybody else is in that, and it is, it is in that play. It's, Excuse me, it's playing zone, uh, but they're not playing man, and so you have a guy wide open. And, and so it, it was weird to see that all day they shut this play down, but that one time, one guy is out, one guy's playing zone, while the other guys are playing man, vice versa, and you get a long touchdown, and, just and, like that. And one. Here's a theme, here's a theme. So Christian Stewart on that one, all game long they've shut that down, they yep. had a check off. The one time they made an error, he threw a touchdown to Jurgens. What did he tell us about? The, the, the touchdown to Jordan Leslie on the last touchdown. Never threw it He though. said, I've never thrown him that pass. We've run it every, right. all year long in practice. I've never even looked at Jordan Leslie. It's not part of my read. They made a coverage error. He saw him running down the middle of the field. He came up. We, we've seen the maturity of Christian Stewart. Yeah. You make a mistake, it's a touchdown. Christian Stewart's going to I think one of the most telling it. stats is the average yards per completion. BYU, 18.8 yards per completion. Mm. Cal, 10 yards. What does that say? Explosive plays. That's yeah, exactly what BYU plays, did. Yeah. They had explosive plays all throughout the afternoon. Cal kind of tried to just, you know, make their way down the field with, with small plays, but BYU had some big-time plays from uh, guys that 
you know, archive role players per se, uh, secondary type guys, but they've stepped up. You know, we haven't talked enough about Mitchell Jurgens. What a game Jurgens! Uh, incredible. Had. Yeah. We have two receivers in this ball game for BYU. Um, Jurgens had seven receptions for 170 yards, two touchdowns. You got Leslie with five for 155, and then Blackman was six for six 60. For 60 yeah. But when you have two receivers, both go over the century mark in a game. That's a big deal. Would we have said that one of those guys would be Mitch Jurgens? <laughs> Nope. I wouldn't have. I don't, so. I don't think so. I, I think. Otherwise, otherwise, I would have picked him for my wife, actually. Yeah. yeah. We, we somebody should have picked him. Yeah. He might have gotten some votes. Mitch he would have got some votes. He would have got some votes. I think it's interesting. Can I change mine to Mr. Jurgens? For next year. No, 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 for the do, do it for the, 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 the bowl, bowl game, game. Okay. so we can win. So we can get it. But I think it's interesting to see that it doesn't really matter who the receivers are. because I think that speaks you know, volume to the type of player Christian Stewart is. You look at guys like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and it doesn't matter who their receivers are, right? They, they make them good. They elevate their game. I think Christian Stewart is doing that as well when you look at Mitch Jurgens, and then when you look at Devon Blackman, right? Both guys were like, what in the world? Yeah. But again, you got to point that credit to, to Christian Stewart. Let's get to the BYU alumni game changer. Speaking of the quarterback, chances are the relationships that change your life started at BYU. BYU alumni connected for good and Christian Stewart of course is our game changer Blaine you look at those numbers and uh, what he had to deal with the times of pressure coming back from mistakes and finishing and finishing with a victory what what do you say yeah the most impressive thing all night was when the turnover occurred down the red zone. We were talking about the 14-point turnaround. Yep. BYU was going to score. Instead, they turned the football over and let Cal go down. How would he come back from that? He showed tremendous maturity and bringing his team right back down and scoring again. Never lost confidence. Kept throwing the football and distributed it around the field. I mean, I've been really impressed. And, and, and if we're going to talk about the biggest surprise of the season, we, first of all, we didn't think that Taysom Hill would be hurt. Sure. Or Jamal. Or, or Jamal yeah. Williams. But to lose those guys and then have Christian Stewart down the stretch be the guy that carries this football team and, and ends up with the last regular season game thrown for 433 yards and five touchdowns. Just an incredible story and a great senior season. I think the biggest surprise for any of us from BYU's football season is what Christian Stewart's done. Absolutely. All right, let's follow up on the bold predictions that we made during countdown to kickoff. And David, let's begin with, with yours. Yeah, I said BYU would have three turnovers defensively. They cost three turnovers. They only had one, but they really did have three when you look at the Lonnie Fu should have had a pick, and then <laughs> Goff had the, the, the handoff, the fumble. The, yeah. that, that really, BYU should have scooped that up. So really, BYU had three turnovers. So yeah, you're right on the money. Yeah, right on the money. Yeah. Yeah, right man, on the money. Were, Good job. You know, based, on, you. based on that thinking, he was right on. Yeah, he was. I can't hardly wait for your logic. Go ahead, no, Brian. No, no, what was mine was simple, man. I was. I don't need all those formulas. <laughs> I said that BYU would uh, would hold Cal to under 250. And you meant in the first quarter. I said first half. Yeah. First half. Yeah. He had 243. Goff had 243. At the first half. So you were, you were, I was right. You were I was right. right. I said two. Yeah. 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 Right. It's another solid, uh, a brilliant, yeah. brilliant Check. football mind. That's right. That was good thinking. All right. mm -hmm. And you? I was right for real. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I said the BYU was going to throw for over 400 yards. Christian Stewart with 433 yards passing. Um, now, I know Cal's number 125 in the country, and there are only 125 teams, guys. <laughs> but, but still. But still. 400 is a lot of that yards. A lot. 433, and, and it was a great game. And I think I said uh, BYU would pass for more yards than California, and that was right. And that also this would be the day that we would remember that Christian Stewart was a BYU quarterback, and indeed it is with five touchdown passes on the road and all those yards and a dramatic 42 to 35 BYU victory. So if you look at it, I guess we were all right. We're all right. That's a good thing. We're still undefeated. Yeah, the team might be 8 and 4. We're 11. We're 12 and 0. We're 12 and 0. We're 12 and 0. All right, so Miami Beach, just around the corner. Let's let's talk about who BYU might play. It's still undecided, but you've got Memphis, Central Florida, Cincinnati, East Carolina, Houston, and Temple, who still needs a win to get. Bowl eligible, but uh, Cincinnati and East Carolina have kind of been the teams talked about, and, and that might be a repeat of today. Yeah, I, I think so. And and remember, East Carolina is one of the hottest teams in the country early in the season, and they tapered off just a little bit um, as they got into the meat of their schedule. Um, but both of those teams with tremendous team speed, it's going to be a great a great challenge and a great bowl game. And if BYU, um, you know, it's a kind of a weird season. They're 3-0 and against P5 conferences, so they beat Virginia, Texas, and Cal. Right. They're one and three against the Mountain West. What? That doesn't. Make what sense. happened there? It doesn't add up. Yeah, that's so Nevada, Boise State, and um, Utah State yeah. losses, and they beat UNLV. I think 
with this run at the end of the season, they can show that that kind of muddling in the middle was trying to adjust yeah. after all the injuries and all that. They get a P5 win here. They go and beat East Carolina and Cincinnati. Quality opponents in a bowl game. I think that we can mark this one down as a very successful season in light of all of the injuries and, and craziness that they had happen. Who do you want to see the Cougars play in Miami, David? Well, BYU will be facing either East Carolina uh, right. or Cincinnati next year. But who year. do you want to see? Uh, I'd go with Cincinnati. I, like, I mean, Cincinnati just a few years ago was in a New Year's Day Bowl. BCS Bowl. Yeah. BCS yeah. Bowl. So I, I think that's a good matchup. We'll, we'll see what it all pans out to be. Brian? Um, just because he said Cincinnati, I'm gonna say <laughs> East Carolina. East Carolina. Just to go, just be, just to be different. Just to be different. No, but I, I think I think the biggest thing, like Blaine said, was you know they were really high in the beginning of the season. You know they were ranked. I think the the, the lowest they were Everybody's ranked talking was about like them being in the yeah. in the yeah. New Year's Eight right. for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. So just I, like BYU. So I think I think yeah, like like Blaine said, they tapered off a little bit, but still you still have some rec recognition there that they were getting that that not, they were in that national spotlight. So I think that'd be good to put on the resume. For BYU to come away with the win. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern. We'll all be back together for after further review. We'll oh, no, break down him. this game I'm in back. full detail. We'll also talk about the bowl. Maybe we'll know a little bit more about who the opponent might be in Miami Beach. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Eastern. It's the best hour of BYU football on television because of these three guys. So we will see you on Tuesday night. All right, a live look at the Marriott Center, BYU in Eastern Kentucky. That's where we'll be just a short time from now, 9.30 Eastern time. And uh, we got the number one offense in the country against the number 12 offense. Both teams like to shoot a lot of threes, and they don't like to go inside too much. We'll see what happens live on BYU TV. That's coming up at 9.30 Eastern time. It's been quite a day for us here in Provo and in Berkeley as the Cougars go into Cal, and they beat the Bears 42-35. to For David Nixon, Brian Logan, Blaine Fowler, Spencer Lynn, and all of us at BYU TV, I'm Dave McCann. Thanks for being here with us. On to Miami Beach, but first, we're going across the street to the Marriott Center. We'll see you at 9.30 Eastern Time.